loaded with these semicircular cracks indicating powerful banging together to form these things. And we find some of these rocks have hundreds of these percussion marks on them. This, these are the uh, quartzites found on top of the uh, of, um, gold uh, butte in the Blue Mountains of Central Oregon. In fact, they, find, they call it gold butte because there's gold within the finds. And the nearest source is 200 miles to the east. And when it moved out, it brought the gold with it. <laughs> Powerful currents. So I have a lot in that book I, uh, uh, about, about this. Now I'm going to switch. I'm being kind of abrupt in this because I, I, uh, since I talked about this, I thought maybe some of them might know it, but I, I think I made a mistake and I should be introducing this a little better because who can remember what happened three years ago? Anyway, as water is moving off the continents, besides moving resistant rocks long distances, up to 400 miles to the Pacific Ocean, 800 miles to the east. The water is, is carrying all this debris, moving at high speeds, and it's planing down the rough land. And when it does, it's planing it down to a smooth surface called a planation surface. Uh, uh, the definition of a planation surface in the dictionary uh, of geological terms is a land surface shaped and subdued by the action of erosion, especially by running water. The term is generally applied to a level or nearly level surface. By the way, why do they say especially by running water? It's because when they find these flat surfaces, planation surfaces, they find the rounded rocks on top of them. And you only round the rocks by water action. So uh, the surface of the earth has been shaped by water. The planation surfaces have been planed down by the action of water, leaving uh, a thin coating of rounded rocks on top of them. And by the way, Nature doesn't form flat surfaces today on hard rock. It doesn't plane hard rock. It cuts the, uh, hard rock. Channels and dissect it. That's what we observe nature doing now. In fact, the planation surfaces we see out there are being destroyed. They're not forming today. That's the, the key point of this, this research. What is a planation surface? Well, it's essentially a, uh, a big flat surface. They're very distinctive when the sedimentary rocks are dipping. And the, the, it's planed against the dip of the sedimentary rocks. Both hard and soft rocks are planed off all the same, which is a very unusual feature because nature wants to erode soft rocks and leave hard rocks as ridges. But when it planes the whole thing at the same, that is very unusual. And there's rounded rocks on it showing that water did the planing sometime in the past. Anyway, I showed you this picture because these surfaces not only have quartzites on them, these are also planation surfaces. The Cypress Hills right here is, is approximately 80 miles long and was about uh, 15 miles wide before glacial rivers uh, eroded part of it, or glacial torrential uh, catastrophic uh, streams. So this is a planation surface about 1,000 square miles up there in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Here are more planation surfaces in Montana, north central, called the Flaxville surfaces. And here's the, the, the Swift Current Creek Plateau. Here's, what, here's a picture of it. They call it the Cypress Hills. They should call it the Cypress Planation Surface. It's so flat up there. Here's another picture of it right here. Look at how flat that is. Nature doesn't produce flat surfaces like that. And here's an area where it's been dissected by uh, glaciation. I find big erratic boulders from the Ice Age uh, <clears throat> in this valley right here. And here's the east end of uh, Cypress Hills near east end uh, Saskatchewan, flat as a pancake. When you drive up on it, it reminds you of when you drive through Kansas on Interstate 70. <laughs> I did it long ago, and I, I don't remember seeing a hill at all to the whole state. That's what it reminds me of Kansas, flat as a pancake. And you know, the top 75 feet of it's capped by those rounded rocks, cemented together. They're called conglomerate. When you look to the edge of it, by the way, the Cypress Hills are 4,500 feet. They're uh, 2,500 feet uh, higher than the rivers around it, so it's a real high plateau and capped by rounded rocks up to about that big. Here's what they look like right here. 95% quartzite. 
cemented together, 75 feet, capping originally a surface a thousand square miles, forming a planation surface. And here's typical percussion marks on them, showing very turbulent flow. Here's the upshot of it. A huge current was taking these quartzites, eroding the Rockies, moving it east and west, and as it's moving this stuff at high speeds, it was planing the land down smooth. And based on the percussion marks uh, formed by turbulent flow, where some, some of the rocks, mid and, and uh, small sizes, were carried up, come crashing down, you can estimate the current speed by these percussion marks. And based on open channel flow equations in civil engineering, here's the minimum current speeds and minimum water depths coming off the Rockies that we got. For a six inch wide bullet shaped rock, that's about that wide and about that round is, is the smallest, that we, I mean the largest we, we, we think could carry up and the current come crashing down. We got minimum current speeds of 65 miles an hour, minimum current depths of 180 feet. What are we talking about? We're talking about floodwaters washing off the Rockies, moving at high speeds at times. 65 miles an hour is about three times the fastest fast, uh, flash floods on Earth that go down a steep slope. Three times faster than, a fl than flash floods. We're talking about powerful currents. We're talking about the draining of the floodwaters off the land. Objective evidence. But these planation surfaces are all...